this is Charlie from Charlie's Awesome World of Adventures and welcome back to the review circle. Cool. Yesterday we took a look at the first Guardians of the Galaxy, but now I'll today I'll be taking a look at the sequel, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. In in this one, um, um Peter and the Gun are the missions end up on a planet where and they end up actually beating Peter to spot other for ego go who takes the guardians to, to his planet li literally named after him literally it is named after ego however there is something suspicious about the planet Nick, that no one can, one can pick up on up up, up from a uh, peter who is just us happy to be spending some time with his father so, oh, I think it's safe to say that from what we do from the first one, I really loved it. It was a great movie. The, the, definitely one of my favourite MCU films. It's definitely, it was definitely one of the more creative ideas. Yes, and it was, it was told excellently. So, oh then. What did I think of Volume Two? Well, well, I'm gonna say that uh, it didn't live up to up to the amazement of the original. It exceeded it. This movie took what what made a Volume One such an amazing Marvel movie, the and multiplies it by a thousand. And, and this is mainly shown with how the character. Turns off, turns off shown here, here, with Peter as the leader of the Guardians, he wants to look out for his team, even no matter what. When he starts uh, uh, some bonding time uh, with his father, but uh, he would have to decide what's more important: his team or his new father. Speaking of which, e that ego is the so. Oh, is the. <laughs> Arlo slash Pete eats his heart of the uh, who's just happy to spend any time with him, him and prove to him that he can be the father for that Peter's mum um, went to be. E, uh, as for the rest of the Guardians, they all have their strong own personalities that do make them um, such, an, uh, such a great team. In, like, like a more, or for being in the love of intro, as for Peter, to, uh, a rock, rock at being the son, a cat, astic raccoon, in Groot, well, baby Groot in this case, who honestly right now, if you love Groot, Ooh, in the first film, you're going to adore Baby Groot. Ooh, as he takes what makes Groot amazing in the first film and multiplies it. And Drag actually starts oh, bonding with one of the creatures of the planet Eagle, Mantis. Who can, who can read minds, minds and feelings. Thanks, and uh, I was more about ego on his planet than the Guardians. However, of all the characters from the first film, um, I'd say there are two that I actually get at the moment, get more of the film. Um, whether, it be, whether it be a young undo with how he plays an important life to part of Peter's life, and Nebula. Uh, uh, who, who tried eyes to bum to bum on with her her sister that and make up for the mistakes she made in the past I also want to say that the actors did a great job once again and and this is especially shown with the actors from the first film it would be with Chris Pratt Zoe Saldana now all Vin Diesel is now baby group, they each offer a great age, 
a look into their characters and make them them um on the heroes they truly are and then there's the story which is the one element and that was that i was surprised i went a bit emotional oh i'll start off with the things it handled that it took in the first and hand handled even better it it like the first film and the movie you know also how to to balance the comedy with the action show where there will be time for and the movie will get really action packed and as time as for the com- comedy it would just come at, a, at the right time i i'm not Oh, do a good serious moment. Speaking of which, the movie actually offers a lot more emotion this time. Um, this isn't mm, it's mainly shown um, with the late relationship Peter would have with his newfound father, but but and the guardians, uh, where he would have to decide uh, who he'd rather belong with, if and who he truly is. It it also does actually get to a bit with his relationship with Yondu. Who was an interesting character, side character from the first film? Um, and I was given a lot more development uh, of uh, how he can act. It'd be, be like a true father figure to Peter. So, with the three elements it has to try, I handle as well as tell a strong own story on itself. Oh, the execution manages to have time. And for each to work together. It also has a few side plots like the one uninvolving Yondu Rocket and Baby Baby Group. Ooh, the love between Indrax and Mantis. Just all the relationship between the the more or a Neb Ebola, uh, and have them f- them make their way into the film that doesn't feel too forced in. In. And then there are the visuals. All I'm going to say is that if you love the effects from the first film, you're going to love the visuals here. Here. Yeah. Yeah. I might as well start off with the biggest positive. If that... It's really colourful. Seriously. There was a lot of colour around everything. And it took advantage of it in see when there are parts that where it isn't as colourful, it does work well with the darker tone. Oh, that scene is trying to play uh, a with if and make it end up as for the CGI, like the first film, it would mainly be used on characters such as Rocket and Baby Groot, Ooh, which does give them a really unique design where Rocket is. <laughs> Here has a more cute design as a raccoon, and baby Groot is so adorable. Horrible, but when you don't want to actually have him live with you, and then there are the action scenes. I will admit that aren't as many as there is in the first film. Um, yeah, the action does really play to it to the advantage. It manages to keep each scene in for ill intense and exciting. I think in that can leave the viewers on the edge of their seats. Especially with an with an incredible climax as with two which knows how to use the IMAX for or Matthew Tom Disney Plus being more weird if that actually would work well with the special effects. Yes, the, the effects in this movie are really good, and I mean really, really good. Uh, but the IMAX does bring them to life. I uh, where it does does make you feel like you're actually in the world, which is it's what every movie should if it does try to accomplish. So overall, oh, it's it's usually hard for a sequel to do this, but for a second time, go, oh, it, it keeps the amazement from last time. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. It is a strong sequel to the to the first film. Um, um that takes everything that people loved loved about it, it 
and increases it with a that a highly engaging story, great balance of of the tongue, oh pretty well handled side plots, great visual effects, intense action, an incredible climax, great voice acting, and some very lovable characters. Of course, fans of the Ars movie are gonna love this. This a lot. interested in checking this one out, I say that you at least need to watch the first movie. The rest of the MCU won't matter to as much, but you at least need to watch the first film to understand what's going on. Basically, basically like I love what they did with the first movie. And how they were able to do the amazement with the second one makes me excited. I just check out the, the holiday special at the end of the, the year it, and the third film next year, which is what I am proud to, to give volume 2 a 10 out of 10. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. For me to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Review Circle. Bye!